My old dad used to say it takes a very small pin to prick a very large balloon. And we're living in a very solemn time at the moment around the world where everyone's talking about the coronavirus. And it's moving from country to country. It's presently, I think, officially an epidemic, but they're concerned of, of it moving to the level of a pandemic. And the Oxford economic says that if it does, it will cost the world's economy in 2020 about $1 trillion. And as I thought about that and realized, now here we have these two countries, the U.S. and China, one superpower, one wanting to be a superpower, and they're vying like two big boys in the sandlot. I'm the king of the castle and you're the dirty rascal. And trying to work out a deal. And yet here is this little virus, smaller than the human eye can see, doesn't even have the ability to self-replicate. It has to hijack your cells to take over your nucleus and reprogram the nucleus to produce little viruses. That's how it functions. It's even pre-life in many ways. And yet this coronavirus, symbolically named after the little crown-shaped spikes on the virus, it's neutralizing the economies of these two great nations. It could bring down the presidency of the United States. If the economy here collapses, and we've seen just in the last few days, the stock market plummeting because of it, and the supply chains around the world have been broken, and many companies are announcing losses already of 50, 60, 70 million dollars, because essentially the economy of China has shut down. And I was thinking of the story back in 1 Samuel chapter 6, how the Philistines had defeated the Israelites. And the Philistines are already spoken about like big men, big tough guys like Goliath. And when they stole the Ark of the Covenant and put it in the house of Dagon, the question might be asked, how would you neutralize a nation of he-men? Would you use an earthquake perhaps, or an exploding volcano, or a meteorite smashing into their country? And God said, well, no, I don't think we need to go that far. I'll send some mice into their garners, and I'll smite them with tumors, with hemorrhoids. And that's what brought the Philistines to their knees. And in chapter 6 of 1 Samuel, in verse 4, they said, What is the trespass offering which we shall return to him, that is, to the Lord? They answered, Five golden tumors and five golden rats, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. And that's how the plague was stopped. You know, Man vaunts himself. He thinks very highly of himself. I recall years ago Dr. Gooding describing a young man, strong, virile, intelligent, well-educated, good-looking, falls in love with a beautiful woman, has a great career path ahead of him, planning his own marriage, all the details, but unknown to him, there's a little microscopic virus at work or perhaps a little cancer cell. He doesn't even know it. And he carries on with all his big plans and dreams, but inside him there is the seed of death, and it cripples him, and it brings him low, and it finally takes him away. And as Dr. Gooding added tellingly, the thing is that the little cancer cell didn't even know what it did. So, says the Bible, we should not vaunt ourselves up against the Lord. We should humble ourselves before him. That little coronavirus reminds us who actually 
wears the crown in the universe, who actually is in control. And woe betides any man who rises up against the Lord. As Nebuchadnezzar learned, when he was humbled to the place where he was hobbled like an animal in his royal garden, eating grass like an ox, he said, I know there's a God in heaven, and those who exalt themselves, he is able to abase. May the Lord humble these great countries, China where they have abused the Christians, and God is getting their attention. So we need to pray for those suffering. We need to pray for those medical personnel who are seeking to stem the tide. But we need to pray that people will realize how fragile life is and how important it is to prepare to meet your God.